In this video, as it says, I'm going to teach you how to communicate uh, an Android phone, okay, via in one of these modules, okay, to talk to a, well, our STM32 microcontroller, okay. To summarize the project, today we're going to be uh, sending uh, signals from the microcontroller. All the signals got to be single characters, either a 5, a 1, a U, a X, and you get the point. Now, single characters. Uh, from the mic controller, whenever we press PV1, we're gonna send a five, and we're gonna turn a virtual LED on a Android app. If we want to turn off that virtual LED, we're gonna use LED six. We're gonna be pressing uh, push buttons uh, PV7, port B11. And then when we, whenever we press that, we're gonna send a six to the Android. Now, from the Android app, at the same time, we're going to have a key that's called be called on and off. Whenever we press on, we're going to send a value A. Whenever we press off, we're going to send a value 1. And with that, we're going to use it to, to turn off and on uh, port, port B3, okay, which is going to be some lights. Also, we're going to be blinking live B5 whenever we press the blink button. To download the app, just go to the Play Store. Go into search and type in customize your Bluetooth control or BT control, should I say. To use the app, you need to, you can either follow the instructions or you can just watch it, continue watching the video. All right, this is how a regular control looks like. It's already configured. To, con to configure the one we're going to use, I'm going to use, uh, for example, 5. A so I'm going to say that LED 6 it was going to be turned on by character 5. I minimize my keyboard. And to turn it off, it's going to be character 6. Save. That's configured. I'm going to say that this one over here would be my on. And I'm going to be turning an LED on uh, with that one. Minimize my keyboard. And I'm going to turn it on with a character A sent from the uh, phone. Uh, so save that one. Uh, this is gonna be my off button. So when I press this one, minimize my keyboard. I'm gonna say in character one. Uh, these are arbitrary characters. I am deciding what are they gonna be the values. I did say blink, minimize keyboard two, minimize keyboard save and it is already configured. I do have to name the control, very important, otherwise it will not work. So I give it a name, and uh, I'm just gonna call it a STM32 control. Okay, sounds like a proper name. Done, and now it is created, and I can actually see the control that we just created. Okay. This is the basic a diagram that we're using today. I just you noticed that I connected two LEDs, PA3 and PA5, that they're gonna be turned on based on whatever signal the phone sends. And I'm gonna be controlling a virtual LED on the phone by pressing PV1 or PV11. Finally, this would be a complete diagram. Here is the module, I just simply directly connected the wires, no resistors needed, straight into serial, um, serial 1, which happens to be, for this module, a T PVA, PV9, and PV10. My ground, it was just straight into ground, and my 5 volts, or 6 volts, because... To demonstrate how the app works, first turn on your Bluetooth. Start the app. You do need to get the right MAC address. You press over here, you select the Bluetooth module, and then you go to the control that we created earlier. We got the right MAC address. Now we just press connect. Notice that the light is no longer blinking. That means it's connected, it's sync. Now we turn an LED, turn off an LED, blinking LED, Turn it off. Now, 
Now I'm going to press B11, which is sensor 5, and it turns the LED on, the virtual LED. I'm going to press B1, and it gives me a 6. Now, multiple, now notice that it's multiple 6s. And that's because I did not handle it really well in the code. Every time that the loop executes and I'm pressing the button, it just sends, continue sending a, a 5 or a 6, depending on what I'm pressing. All right, this is my micro C code. Uh, first thing that I do want to make sure is that here at the bottom, uh, all of my libraries, make sure that USB is unchecked. It, it generates errors, at least for me it does. Okay, all right, so let's begin with the code. Uh, first, I do have two prototype uh, functions, okay, that are declared over here, and we'll talk about them as we get them on the code. I create a variable that is a char type that I call it URD, UR uh, underscore RD, and then uh, another variable that I call update equal to zero. Okay, all right, so once I begin over here, this is my main void. Uh, I call up the first function, okay, setup, okay. Here is the type, the actual function is all the way at the bottom. So I do have to go to the bottom of the code to show it to you. So here is my setup uh, function. First thing that it does is, uh, this is activates the clock signal, the reset control clock, activate so that port A gets signal, and that's how I do. It. That's how we do it on micro C. I also activate port. Oh wait, A, this this is the port. This is port A, and this is port B. Okay, so I activated port B uh, because I'm using a lot today. Port B. I don't think I'm using port A, but uh, anyway, that's how you activate it. I go in and I make. Uh, to their reset state, both port A and port B, all the uh, bits for uh, those these registers that you're seeing. Then after that, to uh, select my to create my inputs, this input over here, PA1, actually I'm not using. PA2, I'm not using today. Okay, this uh, is a pull up. Okay, that's why you will see an LED that later on I'll tell you this regard about it. Now, here we get to the part of the code that we are actually going to be using. All right. So, we're going to be using PV1. I put it as an input. This over here, uh, before I show you that this has to... Uh, uh, it's indicating that we're going to use either pull up or pull down, and in here we decide that it is a pull down. Okay, so PV1 is in the pull down input, PV11 is in the pull down input, and as outputs are configured PA3 and PA5. Now let's look at the code. Oh, continue looking at the code. We go back over here, so that's what is the uh, this function setup does. Then after that, we go into all this mess. What is all this? Uh, it just uh, what it configures the UR communication. Notice that it says 9600. When I first copy it from the uh, example of micro C, it, it was set up at 50, 56,000, and it didn't work well. If you go to the help menu, and you search. In here, uh, I'm gonna press in search. That is my UART. I type in the word UART, and it gives me all the libraries and uh, all, everything related to the UART. UART. If I click into it, it gives me all of this information that is very useful to to write code. One thing that is important, since we using the since I am using the STM32. If I use UR1, I do need to use pins 9, uh, PA9, and PA10. Oh, okay, this is why I activated uh, this uh, port uh, when I saw 
that was the sec the first instruction on the setup a function that I had earlier. All the way at the bottom of this, uh, well, it tells me all the different configurations that we can use for UART. Okay, some of that stuff is too advanced, I don't even need it. Okay, but uh, all the way at the bottom, there is a there is a sample program here, and this is the sample code. I just went ahead copy it and I modify this to 9600. Why 9600? I they always work for me every other tutorial that I ever follow and whenever I done code in and done projects I use 9600 and it works fine especially for the uh, HC07 uh, module okay which is this little guy okay and here very simple uh, this is uh, it's constantly asking if, if we have received any info and if we have received the info, then um, in the buffer, uh, the microcontroller is asking if the HC07 module has sent any information. And if the uh, and if that's the case, and then it just assigns whatever is in there. Notice that it's only one bit at a time. A bit is like a letter A, or a one, or an X, a Y. It's assigned to this variable and then after that it just bounces back it writes it out this is how we write information okay uh, to the Bluetooth module this is how we read information from the Bluetooth module now let's go back to the code <coughs> okay now this I just copy it and yes uh, at the beginning if my phone is turned on I do receive this text message this start then after that we enter the infinite while loop and notice that uh, the first thing that I did is I just went ahead and copy everything just the way it was. I asked, hey, is there any, any has the Bluetooth module provided any information because the phone sent the information. So the phone is talking to the Bluetooth module, the Bluetooth module is talking to the microcontroller. If there is any information, then I store it on this variable and then I'll bounce it back to the phone just to I get a feedback on my phone to make sure that I am that so I know that my microcontroller is actually doing what it's supposed to be doing. I'm gonna go a little lower. Alright, so here is what I start making decisions. If the value that I get from the uh, module HC07 okay happens to be an A because the phone sent an A then I, I go into port A, bit 3, and I set, bit set 3, which is going to make that output uh, to be a 1, and it will turn the light on. If I don't have an A, then it's going to go into an else, and it's going to go back to that same port, port A, bit reset 3, and it's going to put a 1, which is going to turn it off turn off the LED okay for the LED uh, port A3 if I get a number 2 okay remember all of these are single characters then it asks over here back again or oh, it tells port A B set 5 which it will turn the light on and then I call this delay 1 function okay notice that it has two parentheses which that makes it into a function and the function is right here okay and it's calling a micro C standard function okay I could have just copy delay microsecond a thousand both here and here but then that what it would have done is create a repetitious code and it would have been wasteful because uh, micro C creates a standard repeating loop to delay for a thousand milliseconds which is a second uh, every time that you write this line of code by me creating my own function now micro C creates this once and then my function is using it every single time so this is a way to optimize my code after the delay of, micro of a thousand microseconds which is a second then it goes into port A bit 5 and resets it and puts it a 1 which it makes that LED turn off and then waits a, a, a second and then the code executes until it comes back over and this why this is this is why the light will be blinking. Finally, 
we go here, where now we have written an input, IDR. Remember, ODR is output, but IDR is input. So it's written if the input of port B, 11, and in here is port B, number one. So B1 and B11. If B11 is pressed, then it writes into the uh, Micros uh, HC07 module, Bluetooth module, a five, which that module and then sends the signal to the phone. And that's how I turn on the virtual LED. LED, I believe is LED, LED five on the phone. And if I wanna turn it off, then I press B1, which it causes to write a six, and that it happens to be the uh, turn off signal for the LED, the virtual LED on the phone. So this is sending information to the microcontroller, and this is conditional based on what the phone, what information the phone sends to control, to cause a control in the microcontroller.